pancetta. Does it have to be pancetta? Can be can be bacon? Can it be? <laughs> Are you trying to make I'm, me react on camera? <laughs> it has to be pancetta. Yeah. And Mariana, I don't imagine I could use olive oil for this dish. You really should not if you <laughs> want to keep me happy. <laughs> I'm Marion and I'm Sylvia and we have an epic show lined up today because we are tackling the big icons of both our respective cuisines. We are Sylvia, indeed. What are you up to today? I am making a classic bolognese, that beautifully rich meat ragu that makes every heart melt. And I'm making that ultimate classic Thai noodle dish pad thai. It's going to be beautiful chewy noodles, a sweet sour sauce and all the very traditional ingredients involved. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> now before I start with my bolognese I feel the urge to dispel a couple of misconceptions around Ooh, this yes. dish. Okay let's do that. For starters in Italy this dish is known as ragù. Okay. The other myth I think I'm gonna have to debunk is that we don't really use spaghetti for this dish. <gasps> the other thing that it needs is a long time cooking. Don't ever think about doing a quick bolognese. Okay, I'm going to start with the usual suspect, extra virgin olive oil in a hot pan. Are there differences the way people would make this in Italy or is it supposed yeah. to be like <laughs> one, like this, you have to do it this way? Well, it's funny you should ask that because this particular dish has caused so much controversy over the years in Italy that in the 1980s the Chamber of Commerce had to sort of deposit the recipe and it's oh. like heritage listed. Oh, and right. I'm going to add a little bit of thinly sliced pancetta. Does it have to be pancetta? Can it be, can it be bacon? Can it be... <laughs> I'm not okay, answering okay. that. <laughs> you're, tr you're trying to I'm... make me react on camera. <laughs> it has to be pancetta. Yeah. Let me just add some onion. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, celery and carrots to this. And then a pinch of salt, and this has to cook for about five, six minutes until it's tender. Okay, so while you're doing that, I might go through and, and get started on my sauce. So, okay. a couple of ingredients here that are absolutely essential. I would say that Pad Thai quite differs quite remarkably around Bangkok, around Thailand. Oh. The two main key ingredients, tamarind and palm oh. sugar. And I'm just going to get sugar. That tamarind's really sour. Oh, so, okay. So this to is going to balance. And I actually find that palm sugar, it doesn't quite have that sick, sickly sweetness that mm, a refined it's milder, white sugar I has. Agree. It's a bit wilder. A bit wilder. A bit wilder. A bit wilder. It's a bit wilder. Oh. It's wilder. I like palm sugar already. <laughs> It's a bit milder. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of. You, you're starting sauce. to speak with an Italian accent. I can't, aren't I? I'm contagious. <laughs> I'm going to add just the tiniest dash of dark soy. Okay. Because I like the colour. I don't like an, anem an anemic looking uh, noodle. So I'm just going to let that simmer away until that sugar dissolves. While that's happening, I think it's um, time for me to add the meat, and I've got a mixture of pork and beef mince. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna add it to the carrot, onion and celery mixture. Not all at once because I don't want it to stew. Okay. Look, this is the initial bit of the making of the ragu is where you have to pay a little bit of attention, but then it stews for like four or five hours and you right. can go get your nails done. <laughs> Let's do that. What's happening then? Oh, so, that's almost like a caramel, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so that sugar has dissolved. Is this lovely syrupy. syrupy sauce. So that doesn't take very long at all. We're just waiting on um, the meat to brown a little bit before we add the wine to the ah. pan. So. And I notice it's, it's white wine. I think people might be surprised that it's not red wine. I'll be honest with you, I have at times made it with red wine. Mm -hmm. Fabulous, <laughs> either way. Whichever, More hate mail. More hate whichever mail, just one appear. you've got, More it's okay. Just, just make sure it's good enough to drink, okay? Because mm, uh, just have a taste, one. let me know. Because if it's not good enough to drink, then it's not good enough to use in your sauce. Well, it's pretty good. I think it would have been better if we had another glass. I know, right? <laughs> Thanks for being the taste tester. Oh, you're so welcome. Mm. Anytime. Okay, I'm going to add the wine now, and I'm going to let that cook together with the meat and the vegetables until it evaporates, and that will take one or two minutes. You will smell it, and then as the alcohol evaporates, you smell the sweet tones of the grapes, which is what you want in your sauce. See, can you smell it now? I can, I yeah. can. The alcohol has evaporated. I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste. A teaspoon goes a long, long way. And just some chopped tomatoes or passata. And I'm actually going to use the tin that came in to scrap off the leftover bits. I'm just going to use some of the stock to do that. And then I'm just going to add some stock. Once this goes to a nice simmer, I'm going to turn the heat down. I'm going to pop the lid on. And basically it needs to cook for at least 
I'd say three hours, four hours or five is even better. Now the other thing I'm gonna add now is one of the controversial ingredients I was talking about and that is bay leaf. Right. Okay, that's me done for a few hours. I'm gonna pop the lid on. Now, because I know you and you know me, I've got one that's been simmering away for a while, so I'm be, I'll be ready to swap very we soon. We don't like to wait. Okay, so let's talk about noodles, Sylvia. So here in Thailand, we would use a very thin, fresh rice noodle, but of course that is just impossible to find overseas. <laughs> so, um, you know, these rice stick noodles are a bit thicker than traditional, but um, they're available, you know, in any sort of supermarket. So I know a lot of people tell me that they have trouble stir frying rice noodles because they all stick together oh. and they clump. If you would like to take a couple of extra steps, there's a couple of things you can do to help yes, that. Yes, definitely. Um, so you can just grab your rice sticks, just soak them in normal, just water from the tap, not hot not and hot, cold, not, just okay. regular room temperature. So you do that, make them a little soft, and then you want to cook them in the boiling water. So see here, we're, we're not sticky at all. Yep. We're just firm. So the noodle should be chewy. So this is my cue to actually add the finishing touches okay. to my sauce. Now I'm going to add my second controversial ingredient, and this is nutmeg. And you don't have to add it, and in fact, if you don't, the Chamber of Commerce will be happier with you than they're gonna be with me. But this is the way, you know, my family makes ragu, and I like to add a tiny amount, and it gives the sauce a really rich warmth. Now, the last ingredient, and I'm sure a lot of people would already know about this and would um, add it, but maybe some people are gonna be surprised by it. But the traditional recipe wants a little bit of milk. I was wondering if that was a traditional ingredient or whether it was something that happened when bolognese went mm. out into the world. So it is traditional, cool. You cook it in the sauce for another 20 minutes or so. Then we will be ready to cook our tagliatelle and Beautiful. pretend we're in Bologna. <laughs> but in the meantime, can we please have some pad thai? Let's pretend we're in Bangkok for a minute then. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I'll just talk about a few yes. other ingredients first because there's a couple of more very key ingredients for this. One, oh. you need to have this pickled radish. It really adds the piquancy to the, the noodle. Without it really this, would, yes. without this, you're not having a proper pad thai. The other thing, is Chinese chives or garlic chives. So you can use spring onion. Yeah. Um, but if you really want to make the very classic traditional one, you search these out at your Asian grocer. Now, always with a wok. Hot, like super hot, like, holy cow, I'm gonna burn the house down hot. <laughs> like, that's how it needs to be. I'll put a little bit of oil in there. A little bit of red shallot. i get my prawns in there. And Mariana, I don't imagine I could use olive oil for this dish. You really should not if you <laughs> want to keep me happy. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so a couple of eggs. I'm just going to spread this I'm out. You're almost out. making a little bit of an, an omelette. And now I'm going to add in a little pinch of these pickled, this chopped pickled radish for our dried shrimp. Now, because I'm using fresh shrimp, you could leave the dried out. I like the, I like the dried. So I'm going to add in ah. tofu. So we always usually have a protein plus tofu. Okay, this. so is this hard tofu? It's firm tofu. Firm yeah. tofu. And now we've got our noodles. Now these are perfect. They're not sticking together. And we want some of our sauce. Once more, I'm learning that with Asian cooking, it's all in the preparation because then the dishes tend to come together so quickly. That's right. So that noodle is still soaking up some of that sauce, which is exactly uh -huh. what we want. Add my garlic chives. Now, I like to add the bean shoots in to here so they peek through a little oh, bit rather okay. than just being a garnish on the top. This is the perfect color. We've got the green, we've got the egg, yeah. we've got the pink little prawns. Yay! See, 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 see. And then we want some peanuts. Oh, I love that texture. Yeah. A few spring onions on the side. We want a little bit of lime. Now, the chili powder usually just comes on the side. And so you would squeeze the lime in and then. You gotta squeeze mix the in. lime, you mix the chili, you do all Can we that. Do it? You do it, let's do it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm not gonna speak. <laughs> I'm too busy. But. Thank you. I'm glad it's you got like it. It's got everything you need. How do we eat, how do we get to eat more noodles? Well, I'll show you very very quickly. I have made some fresh tagliatelle. Now I, I didn't show you how to make them today, but there's another episode where we show you how to make homemade pasta, so you can refer to that one. Now this amount of sauce is enough for a lot of people, and it's just us, and um, we're gonna leave some for the crew, I maybe, suppose. Maybe we'll leave <laughs> but I'm just gonna use half of it, and I'm gonna put it in this pan. Now that the water is boiling, I'm gonna add the pasta all at once. Just do a little bit of this to make sure that you loosen it up and it doesn't stick together. 
Nice. And a good pinch of salt. You really need to season your water. In Italian cooking, you have to season the water. Now, you can see that the water is turning a bit cloudy and white, and that's wonderful because it's now full of all the starch from the pasta. And I'm just gonna get a little bit and thin out my sauce. Uh -huh. So with fresh pasta, you're never gonna get like that al dente bite, but you still want a certain These amount of chewy, firm. like nice chewy. firmness. Yes, exactly. Lift it out, stand back. Because <laughs> it's me and I'm notoriously <laughs> clumsy. <laughs> and just pop it in there. And it keeps on cooking a little bit in the sauce. Got it on medium high heat. Just wanna toss it all together. It really makes a difference. You want them all evenly coated. And so you can see because it's gotten a little thicker there, like it's That's more... right, because the pasta cooking water will also act as a bit of a binder, yeah. I suppose, and it will make the sauce really luscious. Okay, we're good to go now. A little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Parmigiano Reggiano, which incidentally comes from the same area this dish is from. This is your Sophia Lauren moment. Mm. It tastes so much better when an Italian makes it. <laughs> So two super huge dishes. I mean, these are like the classic, classic icons, mm, right? Exactly. Totally nailed it also. <laughs>